back to M119 and follow the path if you did not have this mutation. Presence of P31 places you within subclade O2. For a more refined placement within the subclade, follow the rest of the decision paths until you end at a yellow box. This is your subclade. If you have M95, M88, and PK4, you are in subclade O2A1A. Lack of PK4 places you in paragroup O2A1 star. If instead of PK4 you have M297, you are in O2A2, res a negative result for M297 places you within the O2A star lineage. Now back up to M95. If you lack this mutation, but have M176 and 47Z, you are in O2B1, and a negative result for 47Z places you in paragroup O2B star. If you had no additional mutations after P31, you are in paragroup O2 star. If you do not have SNP P31, you are part of paragroups O star or O1 star. Now that we have examined the series of SNPs that define each subclade within O1 and O2, let's follow the path if you are positive for M122 and are therefore part of subclade O3. After verifying that you have SNP M122, check your result for M324. If you don't have this mutation, you are in pair group O3 star. A positive result for M121 places you within O3A1, whereas presence of M164 places you within the O3A2 lineage. If you do not have SNP164, you are, uh, you are either in subclades O3A3, O3A4, O3A5, or O3A6. Let's continue and follow the path if you do not have M164. The next SNP result to check is P201. If you have the SNP, you're in subclade O3A3, the most complex subclade in haplogroup O. Presence of M159 places you within O3A3A. If you do not have M159 but have M7, you are in O3A3B. Presence of M113 places you within O3A3B1. SNP P164 means you are in O3A3B2. And if you lack both of these previous two mutations, you are in pair group O3A3B star. If you did not have M7, check your result for M134. A positive result for this mutation places you within subclade O3A3C. If you have M117 and M162, you are in O3A3C1A. If you just have M117, you are in O3A3C1 star. If you do not have M117, but are positive for P101, you are in O3A3C2 whereas a negative result for P101 places you within the pair group O3A3C star. Finally, if you did not have M134, you are in pair group O3A3 star. Now there is one more section to explore. We still need to see the path if you did not have P201. At this point, Check the mutation identified by marker 002611. If positive, you are in subclade O3A4. For a more refined placement within this subclade, check your result for P103. A positive result places you within O3A4A. Whereas a negative result means you are a part of the O3A4 star lineage. If you did not have the mutation identified by 002611, but were positive for M300, you are in O3A5. 
If you are positive for M333, you are in subclade O3A6. If you did not have any additional SNPs, you are in O3 star. Now that you've located your subclade within haplogroup O, or at least have a good idea of the relationship among the different subclades, let's delve into a more refined analysis of the frequency distribution of haplogroup O. The first step to examining the subclades is to take a broad approach and examine the relative frequency distribution of the four main lineages within haplogroup O. These are the pair group O star, shown in red, subclade O1A in yellow, subclade O2 in green, and subclade O3 in blue. From this figure, you can see that pair group O star is present in Central and Northeast Asia, but not in Southeast Asia. Subclade O1A, indicated by the yellow pies, tends to be associated with the Austronesian expansion. It is thought that the man carrying the defining SNP for O1A lived in Southeast Asia approximately 30,000 years ago. Many of the descendants of this man remained within Southeast Asia, but some continued eastwards into Taiwan, where subclade O1A reaches rates nearing 100% in some populations. Interestingly, this subclade is very rare in Japan. The frequency of subclade O2, indicated by the green areas, shows a unique distribution because it seems to be disjointed with high frequencies detected in Northeast Asia and in parts of Southeast Asia, with a low frequency of subclade O2 between these areas. It is thought that the subclade appeared approximately 30,000 years ago in East Asia, and the people carrying the SNP mutation defining subclade O2 split into two separate migrations. One group went north into Northeast Asia, whereas the other continued into Southeast Asia. Subclade O3, shown in blue, can be quite frequent in some populations of China. This subclade is thought to provide an historical glimpse into the spread of agriculture into China. This figure illustrates the frequency distribution of deeper clades within haplogroup O. The pie charts illustrate the relative proportion of each subclade within that region. Some interesting patterns emerge from this figure. For example, if you recall in the previous slide, I pointed out that subclade O2 seemed to have a disjointed distribution, and this slide provides further support for that observation. Within India, Central, and South Asia, you can see that the predominant clade within subclade O2 is O2A, represented by the purple area. If you look at the pie charts for Northeast Asia, and in particular Japan and Korea, you can see that there is no subclade O2A, but instead O2B, shown by the muted pink colors. Now I'll point out some of the recent information that has been detected for the individual subclades. First I'll start with subclade O1. This subclade represents a major Chinese page line and is thought to be associated with the Austronesian expansion originating from Taiwan or the southeast coast of China. Subclade O1 is most frequent in Taiwan but is also associated with Han Chinese in South China. This subclade is rarely detected in Japan, suggesting that there is not a close relationship between Japanese and Austronesian populations. SNP M119, that defines subclade O1A, is thought to have arisen approximately 30,000 years before present, likely in South China or Southeast Asia. Subclade O1A2, a branch within subclade O1A, tends to only be detected in Southeast Asia. Subclade O2 likely arose around the same time as subclade O1A, approximately 30,000 years ago. It tends to be less common than subclade O1 as a whole, but has a unique geographical distribution that seems to be disjointed. Subclade O2A is mostly associated with tribal populations of Southeast Asia, whereas subclade O2B is found in populations of Northeast Asia, specifically Korea and Japan. 
Subclade O2A is also detected in India and is found at relatively high rates among all tribal language groups, but is not detected in cased populations. Subclade O2B is thought to have arisen in the ancestors of Korean and Japanese populations. Subclade O2B1A is mainly only found in Japanese men. The few ex exceptions to this were the detection of the subclade in a few individuals scattered throughout the Great Japanese Empire. It is likely that these individuals represent admixture from Japanese soldiers or civilians into the local populations within only the last several generations. Estimates for the time of origin of this subclade vary widely, but on average it seems that subclade O3 arose between 10 and 24,000 years ago, and likely arose in a man living in China. Subclade O3 is still relatively common in East Asian men, particularly among the Han Chinese and Tibeto-Burman groups. Subclade O3 is strongly associated with the spread of farming into China, and perhaps the ancestors of this subclade were the first race farmers in China. Subclade O3 is the most common haplogroup O subclade detected in Polynesia. Subclade O3A3B is quite rare in modern populations, but was detected during analysis of ancient remains from archaeological sites along the Yangtze River in China. This concludes the tutorial for Y-DNA haplogroup O. If you wish to follow up on some additional primary literature, you can check out the links on the text version of this online tutorial. And you can also find some other information regarding haplogroup O at the website for the International Society of Genetic Genealogy. Thank you for your interest in YDNA haplogroup O.